So the Gibb River Road is 660k gravel road with multiple river crossings. It runs from Derby to Kununurra in the northwest of Western Australia. It's known as one of the harshest four-wheel drive tracks in Australia. We're going to set off from Derby uh, and endeavour to run the entire 660 kilometres that is the Gibb River Road in the Kimberley. I, I want to know if it's possible. I want to know if I can do it. I want to know how far I can go day after day. Um, I want to be in the elements. I want to be on that country um, and feel that land under my feet and get myself across it off my own two feet. Well, maybe I'll go back to how it started. Two years ago, we were sat at uh, the Margaret River Heart watching the Banff Mountain Film Festival and we watched a short film on three friends who ran through this valley in Kyrgyzstan and it just looked like the most crazy adventure ever. Um, and we just sort of said to each other, let's do something. Basically, she being the runner, she goes, let's run somewhere. And Jared had actually just gone into remission for melanoma. And he was like, I want to do something like that, but for a cause. I was like, sweet. And I kind of jokingly said, oh, I've always wanted to run the Gibb River Road. And uh, Jared put it into his coaching calendar and was like, hey coach, two years time, I'm running the Gibb. So yeah, so May next year, we're gonna tackle 660 Ks of pure running over hopefully eight days. We do plan on being the first people to ever achieve that, um, to help raise awareness for the Melanoma Institute. So if we just put 18th, maybe for um, for them at El Questro. Yeah, yeah, we can. Um, obviously 660 k's. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if we're looking at around that eight, we'll, we'll, we'll say roughly around 80 k's a P day. Yeah, as a ballpark figure. I mean, I think um, we need to go by feel as we always do. So if we are feeling yeah. good, then fantastic. We'll try um, and push to... 100Ks or something. I think the idea of like, I think as far as generating buzz for the cause too, if people always love to see you attempt to go that little bit further than potentially yeah. the average Joe could. So yep. if we're feeling good, then we try. Yep. And if we need to pull it back, then we do. Yeah, you yeah. know, we've got the ability to do that. And what about, um, probably not really rest days, but I was just um, reading through my book. Maybe we could look at potentially a couple of stops maybe some swim holes, maybe. Mm, um, for some recovery. But we'll also need to talk about things like petrol and food and stuff like that. Which, yeah, for sure. I mean, I know we've got support crew and that kind of thing, but. Oh, it's so important though. Like when I worked at Broom Broom, people just didn't understand the vastness and the yeah. isolation of the country. So you got to plan for everything. One thing we haven't discussed is the fundraising goal. Mm -hmm. um, I have in mind 200 grand. Mm -hmm. Look, it's a, like it's a lofty goal, but I think it's achievable. I think we will see most yeah. of that coming in once we actually start running. These early days are yeah. kind of hard. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's with a couple of really good fundraisers with really smart initiatives. I mean, we've been pretty lucky with the support we've got as far as creating good raffle prizes. Yeah. So we do a solid raffle, you know, $5 entry. And I always like it if it's a, like a... Um, like an optional entry fee. So everyone is welcome to come and join us, but we just ask for say $5 to go towards the cause. Yeah. Um, and if we can do a couple of good fundraisers in the lead up, it puts a bit of money in the bank, but it also yeah. gets the buzz going. Yeah, um, well once people know, it's obviously the word of mouth too. Mm -hmm. um, but I think once we start running, that's where we'll see the funds really, really coming in, especially yeah. if we can get you know, the media on board and yeah. that kind of thing, and plus all the people out on the gib, so. Yeah. Sick. All right, well, 200,000 it is. We've got. That's the goal. Yeah, we've got six months. Yeah, we'll do it. Yeah, we can do it. Yeah. If we can run 660 k's, <laughs> we can raise $300,000.
I, d I don't know if you're ever going to be ready um, unless you're training in that kind of situation all the time, every time. Um, but I think it's a, just a case of preparing yourself the best way you can. You know, we're, we're both fit enough, um, but mentally, I think that's uh, that's the next kind of challenge. You've got to train your brain to to push through those long days, hot days, um, you know, days where we're going to be, you know, probably swimming through river creeks and stuff like that. Um, and that's all stuff that we don't train for. Um, yeah, so we're just setting up for park run. Um, park run is basically a 5k run. It happens every Saturday, 8 a.m. around the world. Some places are seven o'clock in the morning, um, mostly because it's too hot. Um, yeah, so this is our course, Margaret River. Um, myself and a friend of mine, we set this up uh, for everyone to come and enjoy. So I'm here every, every Saturday that I'm home. Um, Basically, they do a 5k loop across a couple of bridges around the, around the river um, and they finish at the coffee shop. Um, the volunteers get a free coffee um, from the Hairy Marin and uh, yeah, the rest of them have to suffer for 5k's. It's just about, to, about getting people out and about and motivated, really. Um, there's no... There's no uh, trophy, there's no um, nothing like that. They get a little token at the end. Um, so they get a little token here at the end. Then they get it scanned. So these have got position numbers on them. Um, and they get them scanned at the end. And then they'll get an email that tells them their time here, their time overall in Australia, their age group, um, stuff like that. It's just a little way to keep motivated, get PBs. Basically just get out. Some people run with a friend. People people take it seriously, people don't take it too seriously. People who are coming back from injury like to use it. Um, people can run flat out and try and run real hard 5Ks. Um, some walk it, excuse to walk the dog just for free, but gets them out, gets them motivated. And where are you guys from? Perth. Perth, yeah. Just down for the weekend? Come down just for this? Oh, lucky us. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, good. Oh. Did you move many up in Perth and that, or? Um, we just sort of started. started. Yeah, okay. This is my seventh. This is yeah, my yeah. third. Third, yeah. yeah. Yeah, cool. It's probably the nicest one. Sorry. Yeah. Excuse my bias. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, cool. Um, <clears throat> I'll just run you through the map, since you're all new. I don't know what you guys are like, but I get very confused with maps. So if, you f if uh, you're a little bit confused, just ask, ask some questions. But uh, I'll show you the map. So we have three big turns. So we have the, obviously the one here, and then one this side of the bridge, and one the other side of the bridge. We use uh, the big traffic cones, so big orange ones. So keep an eye out for those. And there's just a little sign on on those. Yeah. Cool. Any more any more questions? No. No. Happy. Three, two, one, go. Have fun. Good luck. See you, birthday boy. <laughs> so I go to a regular barber and uh, basically she told me for a, probably a good four or five months that I had a decent sized mole on the top of my head. And uh, being the typical male, young, um, kind of invincible, that sort of thing. I uh, yeah basically ignored it um, and ignored it and ignored it and uh, until I noticed it was really starting to become itchy and uh, yeah just kept scratching and scratching and picking off scabs and and then I said to my partner I said look I really should go get this checked you know like she's told me a few times and I, I was on night shift at the time and had multiple calls from a doctor and I sort of thought oh you know like a doctor ringing you and leaving like ten messages. It's probably not a good sign. <clears throat> so 2019, I got diagnosed with stage four melanoma.
I had a big basically number seven in my head. It kind of went from back here to about here and then down to basically my, the start of my ear. Um, and then I had three down here, um, which is basically right down to the neck, un under the ear to the neck. That was, that was where the operation was. But yeah, we ended up having uh, what the doctors called a rotational flap. So basically um, what they did was they, they cut a big, like number seven into my head and then stretched the skin. They, they cut, it, cut it wide enough to, um, to basically stretch the skin over and then they stapled it back together. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty impressive. Yeah. How many staples was it? 47 in the end. Yeah. I was about eight weeks pregnant um, when we found out. Um, and I knew that it was my responsibility to be the strong person. <laughs> you know, if your spouse is going through something like that. Um, but in our dynamic, Jared is the emotionally strong one. So it was like flipping roles a little bit and trying to distract our daughter. Um, and, you know, daddy's unwell, daddy's got to go to the hospital. Um, and unfortunately, because of COVID, our daughter couldn't go into the hospitals because she was also a plus one and you could only have one person go. So uh, a lot of appointments in involved radiation as well. So because I was pregnant with Riley, I couldn't attend a lot of things. So it was quite hard not to be as involved as I wanted to be. Um, it was great to have his parents there for a lot of the meetings and his sister as well, who does have a um, her career in nursing. So she was able to kind of relay a lot of the doctor's <laughs> um, opinions on things. Um, but yeah, it was pretty hard to not be as involved as I'd wanted to be in that time. Um, definitely had a few bre mental breakdowns. <laughs> it's a lot to take on board to be pregnant, have your partner go through cancer, raise a toddler, <laughs> go through a pandemic. <laughs> um, but no, we came out the other end. There's definitely been a silver lining that Jared mentioned that we focus on more family time and um, yeah, the silver lining, I guess, is that we really value every day that we have together more than we did before. Did you name Riley and um, Mummy name me? No, the other way around. How do you name you? Okay, so I should be speaking. Yeah. Night night. Is that your boogers? Oh, yuck! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yuck! <laughs> you got big boogers too. Really, it's just been nothing short of inspirational, to be honest. And I mean, as anyone who watches this will have seen Jared, and what you've seen is what you get. I mean, he's just, he just tackles things head on. And so as much as it's, you feel stressed for your friend because you don't want them to have to deal with this, I don't know that I know many people more equipped to be able to do it. Um, and it just really was, okay, next problem, I'll deal with it and I'll move on. And no, I won't stop doing the things I wanna do and no, I will not let this stop me achieving my goals. So I'd say it really, if, I mean, you just he just seemed so strong through all of it. And so yeah, for me, it was just something that you can really draw on as inspiration. Got it? I know. Butter wouldn't melt. Um, well, this is Angel Dog. <laughs> That's Buddy. This is Angel Dog. So she's a Fitzroy Crossing Rescue, which um, we won't be running through Fitzroy on the gift, but we'll be running above it. Um, and then this menace is Buddy. And uh, I found her on the street in Broome. So they're both from the Kimberley themselves. Well, I was walking home one night and this tiny little puppy came running out of a knot so nice house and attached herself to me and I went to send her back in and then I looked at the state of her and I was like, you are not going back in there, mate. And um, she was so small and, but she just had obviously seen her, seen her exit. And um, so to get her home, I was like, come on buds, come on buddy. Like I didn't know if she was a boy or a girl or what. And by the time I got home, buddy had just stuck and the next day I called SAFE, which is Saving Animals from Euthanasia, and they do a lot of great work in the Kimberley. And I said to them, you know, what do I do? And they said, well, you can surrender her um, <laughs> um, or you can keep her. And I kept her and it was probably one of the best things I've ever done because she's brilliant. I'm looking forward to running it. The running part's the bit that I'm looking forward to. <laughs> yeah. Look, that, that's an unknown. Um, 
I have vague... I think you block out pain. I have vague recollections of how much hurt I was in um, when I was finishing the Cape to Cape uh, and I'm sure that my body will respond in that way. The only thing I would say is I've done a few multi-day races now. So Lara Pinta was a four-day stage race. Um, I did Pemberton, I did the night run, the Saturday Ultra and the Sunday Half um, and I do seem to recover quite well as far as like one of my strengths in ultra running. I think multi-day um, events really play to my strengths and I recover quite well. So I'm hoping that that continues on. Um, and also I'm really stoked that I've already learnt the lesson that just because you feel bad on day three doesn't actually mean you're going to feel bad on day four even if you run more because um, that was very true of Lara Pinta for me. So that's a, an important message to remind myself when maybe I am hurting on yeah. day three. Uh, it's actually quite scary for me. Um, you know, I work near on 100 hours a week. Um, so to be able to train, I'm getting seven, eight, nine, ten hours of training in a week, um, which to the average person, when you purely run, is about 50 to 60 k's. And you're talking about doing near on double that every day for six days. It's um, yeah, quite daunting. <laughs> the most I've done is a 50k run and then I backed it up with a 21k run the next day. So this is uh, yeah, by far the worst that I'll, I'll do. But um, yeah, definitely uh, look at doing some training around sort of 50k's for two or three days in, in training. Look, time on the feet is probably one of the biggest things. Like you need to be getting a fair amount of kilometres in. I'm still not where I want to be as far as how many k's I'm doing in a week. I usually sit at between 100 and 120 k's a week. Um, I wouldn't mind if that went up to sort of more like the 150 to 160 k's per week um, during my bigger weeks in training for this. But to be honest, the thing that can go wrong is your mindset. So all manner of things will go wrong. As far as physically, you're going to hurt. The, there'll be challenges with the vehicles. Um, there'll be challenges making sure we're taking on enough food, enough water, and these are always present challenges in running ultras, but in my opinion, the thing that can go wrong is if we lose our why. If I felt that uh, someone in the team or my safety was at risk, then yes, I would happily call the runoff and I would have no regrets about doing that. But if I'm just sore, fatigued, you know, I, I anticipate, you know, hips giving out, knees hurting, toenails falling off, all those things are going to happen. That's not enough reason to stop running. Physical pain is all a mindset thing. So I think it is a matter of like your mind, that's, that's going to be the biggest, that'll be the thing that will give you success or it'll be the thing that causes failure. So it's, it's how your mind tackles discomfort because everything is going to hurt at one point or another, um, but it's recognising that it's your body's way of just wanting you to probably try and stop. It's, you know, your body's seeking comfort and it's not actually anything to worry about and that just takes practice and learning. But yeah, mindset would definitely be the, the thing I'd have to deal with the most, I suppose.